You're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Have a good day. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Chatterbox Audio Theater presents Partridge's Perfect Present, performed live at the Memphis Brooks Museum of Art on December 12, 2010. Once there was a little bird. A partridge, to be exact. Now, this partridge had once lived under a large spruce tree on top of a hill with his mother and father, but now that he had grown up, he moved away and lived all alone in a small but impressive pear tree. Our hero, the partridge, had enjoyed his new independent life, especially throughout the spring, summer, and fall. He knew, however, that the cold winds and snow of winter would soon arrive. He began to fear the coming harsh winter weather, but even more, he began to become homesick. He knew that he would feel safer and warmer and more loved if he could just return to his old family tree to stay for the cold winter months. Once the spring would come and melt away the winter snow, he would return home to his life of independence in his own pear tree once again. Now, the partridge's mother and father loved him and would be very happy to see him no matter what. But an idea came into the funny bird's little head, the idea that if he were to come home and ask for a warm and safe place to stay, he should not come home empty-handed. No, he would find the perfect present to bring with him. A gift that would show his family just how much he missed them, and loved them, and appreciated them too. But what would be the perfect present? One thing was for sure. Pears Pears just just wouldn't wouldn't cut it. it. Since he had moved into his new home, all he ever had to share with his family and friends when they came to visit was pears. This winter, he would find something very special to bring his family. One day, he was sitting atop his little pear tree, pondering what would make the perfect gift when a very chilly wind blustered by. Winter is coming already, and I still haven't found the perfect gift for my family. I knew I shouldn't have put it off to the last minute. Well, I guess I'd better start off, and I'll keep an eye out to find something on the way. I just can't show up with nothing. So the partridge set off, first flying and then walking. Partridges don't fly too far at a time. And he kept his eyes peeled for the perfect gift. He left the dense forest heading south, and before long, as he was passing by a quaint garden, he heard a familiar voice. Dear, what are you doing walking all alone? And with the cold winds already coming to the forest, little partridge? Honey, look. Well, I'll be. Hey there, young partridge. Could you use a little rest and warmth? It's getting pretty cold around here. Oh, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Turtle Dove, but I'm sort of in a hurry. Perhaps you can help me, though. I'm on my way home to my family's spruce tree, but I don't want to arrive without the perfect gift. Hmm. Uh, Come into our garden, son. We're just packing up to head south for the winter ourselves. Maybe we could be of some service. Oh, yes, please do. Well, all right. And so our friend, the partridge, joined the two turtle doves in their quaint little garden. Oh, what a beautiful home you have. Oh, how sweet of you to say. You'll have to excuse the emptiness. It'll be spring before we are back again. I must say, I will miss it. Your family is just a little way south of here, isn't that right? Yes, ma'am. But it's not the journey that I'm worried about. It's just that I would feel awful about coming home for the winter and not having something to offer my family. I would hate to seem ungrateful. Uh, uh, Don't be silly, friend. I'm sure your folks will be happy just to see you. Oh, I know they wouldn't mind, really. I, I guess I just feel like showing them how much I appreciate them by giving them just a little something. You know, so that they'll always remember the time we spent together. Oh, what a wonderful thought. I know just what you mean. Uh, One moment. What is it, dear? Here it is. Do you see this? 
It's uh, it's such a silly little thing when you think about it, but it means so much to me. Oh, honey, our bell! Oh, it's very pretty. What a beautiful sound it makes. Oh, yes, it is lovely, isn't it? It's really just a simple little bell, but... But you see, this was the bell that was rung on our wedding day. It was found by Friar Owl who conducted the ceremony. He thought it would be nice for us to keep it to always remember the promise that we've made to one another. Yes! That's exactly it! What a perfect gift something like that would make for my family. But of course, I, I could never ask for you to give away your wedding bell. Oh no, I'm afraid I couldn't part with it. But maybe we could use it as inspiration. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> Brilliant idea, honey. Now that we know the kind of gift that you're looking for, why don't we travel together? At least as far as your family tree, that is. Three heads are better than one. Yes, and we'll carry our little bell with us to remind us to keep an eye out for the perfect gift to bring to your family. What do you say? Really? How nice of you to offer your help. I, I simply couldn't refuse such an offer as that. Maybe we'll find a bell just like it on the way. Why not? Anything's possible. Well, honey, I suppose that's that. Say goodbye to the old place. Until spring, that is. We'll be glad to have your company too, friend Partridge. So the three bird companions continued south together. Sometimes walking, sometimes flying, but always on the lookout for a lovely present for a family of partridges. As they traveled, the landscape changed from the forest where the partridge's pear tree was, and the lowland gardens where the turtle doves lived, and gave way to vast farmlands. As they made their way through those farmlands, the air was becoming even colder. And then Mrs. Turtle Dove noticed a family of chickens who seemed to have wandered a long way from their hen house. Well, hello, friends. Sacre bleu, we have visitors. Oh, dear. Come to Mama, mon petit ami. Well, bonjour. Welcome to our little farm. La goo goo. <laughs> well, thank you, and hello to you as well. What a precious little chick you have there. Oh, merci. She is all our pride and joy. Oh, and excusez-moi, this is my mama, Nana He. Bonjour. Hello. hello. Hi. What a lovely family. Grandma, Mama, and Baby too. Reminds me of home. <laughs> oh no! What is the matter, Monsieur Partridge? He misses his family, Madame. Uh, don't worry, friend. We'll be to your family soon, and we will find the perfect gift. You see, this is the first winter since the Partridge has been away from home, and he wishes to spend the cold winter months with his family. But of course! And being the thoughtful little fellow that he is, he doesn't dare return home without some sort of gift to present to his family when he arrives. What a wonderful idea! It would be nice to give such a thing to your loved ones, yes? No? Oh, yes, but I'm running out of time, and I, I simply don't know how I will find something to give them before the winter comes. Mr. and Mrs. Turtle Dove were kind enough to travel with me for a while and share with me the story of their favorite gift. It's our wedding bell. La goo goo. Ooh la la, très très magnifique. <laughs> oh, how sentimental. It was beautiful, Bell, and it must bring back such lovely memories. We have just such a thing, too. You see what little baby Poulet holds in her tiny wings there? La goo goo. Oh, how cute! What is it? It is her baby rattle, of course. It was given to her on the day she hatched by her own grandmama. Isn't that right, Nana? Oh, that old chestnut. <laughs> it is very special. It may look like a chestnut on the end of a stick, but it is made especially by hand and is filled with pieces of eggshell from which her little baby was hatched. <laughs> oh, that's I can see why it's so special to you. That's exactly the sort of thing I would like to give my family, but I simply couldn't take such a treasure away from you or your baby. No, of course not. But uh, perhaps it couldn't hurt to join your little group. I am, after all, very good at finding and making little trinkets such as this. What a wonderful idea, Mama! We shall all come. Little baby seems to have taken a liking to you, Monsieur Partridge. She wants to help you, don't you, baby Poulet? <laughs> Thank you! But surely the farmers won't appreciate you wandering off. Oh, not to worry. We pretty much come and go as we please, and we always return home. Oui, oui. Vive la free range! <laughs> and so, 
All six birds continued on their way south towards the large spruce tree that was the partridge's childhood home. As they traveled, they made quite an interesting sound. What would the calls of the partridge? <coughs> Two turtle doves and their wedding bell. <coughs> the three French hens and their baby's rattle. <coughs> And as they traveled, they left the flat farmlands behind, and they approached green, sloping valleys that led to rolling hills. Oh, we're getting close now! Oh, bon! Soon we will be together again! Yes, but I haven't found the perfect gift for them yet, and I just can't return home empty-handed. Don't give up hope, son. We may find what we're looking for yet. Look, in that tree at the foot of the hill. What is it, honey? Looks like a family of, uh, how you say, black bells. <laughs> That's right. And we all know that nobody likes to collect pretty little gifts like a blackbird. And maybe they'll have something to spare. Oh, do you think so? Oh, we. Oui. I hope so for your sake, Monsieur Partridge. It is getting très, très cold. <laughs> Oh, Roy, that's enough out of you two. Young Mum and I have just about had it. There's a long way to fly yet, and the rest of this rest stop has about just come to an end. Aww. Sweet Ums, look! What's that strange lot coming over here? Hello, Mr. Blackbird. I, I wonder if we might trouble you for just a moment. That's Collie. Pardon? Mr. Collie Bird. At least that's what they call us back home. Some calls us calling birds, too, on account we like to sing so much. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. and Mrs. Collie Bird. I couldn't help but notice your family in the tree here, and I was wondering if maybe you could help me. Well, we'll do whatever we can to help, won't we, kids? Yes, yes Mama. Mama. We were looking for the perfect gift for our friend's family. Yes, and nobody collects pretty little knickknacks like a blackbird. You mean collie bird, dear. <laughs> well, you've got me there, Mr. Dove. Uh, we do enjoy collecting our little treasures, don't we? Yes, like ribbons and lockets and spoon handles and fray pebbles. And chains and watches and tin caps and, and toy cars, too. Too right. Got quite the stronghold back at the nest. Really? Well, if I may ask, would any of those items be available for uh, bargaining? I'm sure I could find the perfect gift for my family in such a collection of fine things. A bargain? For such a cause as yours, we will give you what you want. We can always collect more, you see. <laughs> really? I don't know what to say. Thank you! Thank uh, you! But there is one little problem. What's that? Well, back at the nest is a long way away, I'm afraid, and we've already been traveling south for days. I'm afraid we can't go back up north now, lovey, and we would never be able to get you what you need in time. Oh, well, thank you for the kind offer anyway. I guess not everyone has a special gift that they carry with them. Oh, wait a minute now. Just because all those shiny little knickknacks are so far away doesn't mean we don't have our most precious cargo right here with us. What do you mean? Why, we have each other. Our family is the most important thing we have, you know. Yes, our children are our most prized possessions, even when they do act like a pain in the beak. Daddy! Daddy. Oh, 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 but of course they are. <laughs> I guess I see what you mean. It's just that everyone else so far has had something to show, you know? Something to share. And that's the kind of thing I want to bring my family. Nothing to share, you say? Hmm. What do you say, you collie birds? Shall we share something beautiful with this lot? Yeah! yeah. To right, mother! Ahem. <clears throat> Positions! Good! Ready? One, two, three! La 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 Cheers, mates. <laughs> Sadly, our song is all we have to offer. Well, thank you anyway, Mr. and Mrs. Collybird. And you too, kids. You're welcome. But uh, I'm just not sure what I'm going to do. I really wanted to find the perfect present, and I just don't think there's time. And as it turns out, the partridge was right. 
It seems time had run out for our feathered friends, for just as he spoke these words, a single solitary white and fluffy snowflake fell and landed softly right on the end of his beak. Oh, we should have minded the time. Oh, honey, winter's here. We need to head south. Sacre bleu. We must go back to Le Farm before long, mes amis. Oh, uh, hold on, everyone. Not so fast. It's just the first snow of the winter. There's plenty of time for us to head south and for the ladies to make it home to the farm. Yes, we're not going anywhere until we've seen our friend Partridge here safely home to his family. Oh, the doves are right. Mama, kids, get your voices ready. Mademoiselle Haynes and we little one get ready to shake that rattle. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Turtle Dove, uh, let's make good use of that pretty little bell of yours. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Oh, not to worry, mate. We may not have much, but we'll give them the best of what we do have while we've got it to give. We oui, we. Oui. And as a mother, I can tell you, you just being there would be the best gift ever. Right, and we'll be there to make it all the sweeter. Oh, thanks, everyone. I guess it's worth a shot. My family tree is just atop that hill, right over a... There! Let's go! <laughs> Well, dear, do we have all the berries safely stored? Check. And the beds redressed with the latest fallen leaves? Check. Now, is there anything I'm forgetting? Uh, oh, oh, wait. There. Our little boy's first molted feather up above the door. Now we're ready for the winter. Ah, uh, yes. It sure won't feel the same under the big old spruce tree without him here this winter, though, will it? You know... We really should have paid him a visit before the first snow began to fall, but it's too late now. Yes, you're right, dear. I miss him, too, but I didn't know if I could handle any more pears. Oh. Oh. Why, whoever could it be? <gasps> Son! Hi, no. Hi, Dad. I wanted to come and see you, but before I come in, I want to introduce you to some of my friends. Hello. Oh, how lovely. Hello, everyone. Son, we are so happy to see you. What a wonderful surprise. Do you mean it, Mom? Of course we mean it, son. We were just talking about how much we miss you. What a wonderful gift. A gift? Did you hear that, friends? It's me. I'm the perfect gift. But wait, Mom, Dad, I, I wanted to make today extra special, so my friends and I have composed a little something just for you. Ready, gang? One, two, three. La, la. performance and so moved were the Partridge family that they couldn't help but join in. Come, Come on, get, get happy. happy. Oh, that's not even any. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you, friends. I've never received anything half so lovely as that beautiful song. Everyone, come inside. Any friends of our son or family to us, please. <laughs> and so, all the birds stayed a while, sharing songs, stories, and warm cheer while the winter's first snow fell outside. When the skies cleared, all the visitors made their way down south or back to their homes, all except our friend, the Partridge, who was very happy to stay with his family for the remainder of the cold winter months. All the birds had had such a great time, though, that they returned the next year to sing again. La 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 Hey! And the year after that, and the year after that. In fact, word spread of the birds' cheery winter tradition, and before long, birds of all feathers were spending the first winter snow in such a way. Before you knew it, all the birds of the land were gathering with friends and family, having learned new songs and having gathered new stories and new instruments, too. And over the hills, on the farm, through the gardens, and all over the forest, the birds would tell of that special time, the time when Mr. and Mrs. Partridge were serenaded by... Four collie birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And their partridge. 
home from his pear tree. been listening to a live performance of Chatterbox Audio Theater's production of Partridge's Perfect Present by Marcus Brown, featuring Grant Hatton as the Partridge and Bobby Colley, Kel Christie as Narrator One, Nana Hen, and Mrs. Partridge, Joe Vescovo as Narrator Two and Mr. Partridge, Neil Figueroa as Mr. Turtledove and Papa Colley. Ashley Bug Brown as Mrs. Turtledove, Baby Poulet, and Cindy Colley, and Levita Brooks as Madam Hen and Mama Colley. Music by Sumner Jenkins. Written by Marcus Brown. Produced by Robert Arnold. Directed by Marcus Brown. This is your announcer, Tom Badgett. Chatterbox Audio Theater is a nonprofit web-based community theater that advances the exchange of ideas by channeling creativity and artistic collaboration into recorded audio works that enlighten, entertain, and inspire. Download our shows, meet our cast and crew, and make a donation to support our work at www.chatterboxtheater.org. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together. <laughs>